factory is going into shutdown. Representing some of the biggest cities around the world. 72 of the world's most talented poker players with over $350 million in combined lifetime earnings will put everything on the line over eight months to compete for the title of the first ever GPL World Champions. Which team has what it takes? The Global Poker League starts now. Hello and welcome to the Global Poker League. We are into week eight. It is our final week here of online poker. Tonight is Tuesday night and it's six max action from the Eurasian Conference and then from the Americas Conference. So let's take a look at the matches that we've got lined up for you today. Starting with match 71 from the Eurasian Conference and we will see the likes of Liv Barry for the London Royals, Dario San Martino for the Rome Emperors, Bill Perkins for the Berlin Bears, Mike Leyer hot off three scoop wins for the Paris Aviators, manager Anatoly Filatov, 
uh, for the Moscow Wolverines and Raiden Khan of the Hong Kong Stars. Those lineups will not change. They will be exactly the same in both of the Eurasian matches. The first one is kicking off 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central European time. And then the America's Conference matches will see the likes of New York Rounders, uh, Jason Wheeler, San Francisco Rush have a slight change in Jonathan Jaffe playing. We have Las Vegas moneymaker Jonathan Little, Sao Paulo Met Joao Bar, Montreal National Martin Jakobsen and LA Sunset's Fedor Holtz. Those matches are coming up at 12.30 p.m. Pacific time and the second one, 2.10 Pacific time. So lots coming up in today's show. I am now joined in the lounge by a very special guest the uh, CEO of the Global Poker League, Mr. Alex Dreyfus, here to discuss, of course, what's happened so far. So we're into week eight. Let's talk about how it's gone. Has it been what you've expected? <laughs> Hi, Laura. <laughs> uh, yes, I think it actually uh, it beat the expectation that we had about uh, GPL because um, when we started that project almost like two years ago, uh, I, I believe that we have dreams, we have like ideas, but now it really became concrete. It started on the wheels, I think, as you say, or something like that. Um, and yeah, I'm very happy about the outcome. Uh, we we spent eight weeks trying to improve the product, trying to learn a lot. Uh, I, I do believe that um, we, we have learned a lot from the Twitch um, viewers, from the people that are sending us messages on, on Twitter and every single um, platform. And here we are, it's eight weeks. We're gonna start in less than two weeks now uh, in Las Vegas as well. So uh, a lot of work ahead of us and uh, that's gonna be changing. Let's talk about Las Vegas. So what can we expect? Obviously it's something that's uh, not really been done before. This is all live action from Vegas now. Yeah, so in, in Las Vegas, we are building a 4,000 4, square feet facility, which is like a TV studio. Uh, we're probably gonna call that like the GPL arena. Uh, and we're gonna held heads up matches uh, of every single team every day. So we're gonna have like 33 days, consecutive days uh, of uh, GPL matches. And they will play, you know, no, there will be no audience, but they will play with a heads up format live in a very specific format, which we haven't disclosed too much. The only thing I can say is they are playing standing up, uh, which, is, was, uh, which was something that we said uh, passed in the, in, in the time. And the second thing as well is they will play, let's say on digital platform, meaning that we tried to learn a lot about the esports industry and the esports platform, and we tried to develop a tool and a game that will be played through this TV platform, rather just than playing online with cards and, uh, and chips. Okay, and we see Mr. Aaron Paul, the wild card of LA Sunset. Uh, we haven't disclosed yet when we're gonna see Aaron Paul. Um, I believe it's gonna be in Las Vegas. I heard it's gonna be in Las Vegas. Uh, we're probably gonna announce that in two weeks. Uh, when he will play uh, officially. Uh, we want to be sure that everything is going to be ready for the, uh, for, for the game and for everything. But yes, it's very likely that Aaron Paul is going to play uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, I know he's actually going for a very long um, uh, filming production, so the schedule is very tight for him, mm -hmm. but hopefully he's going he's gonna to make, uh, make, it, make it in Vegas. And after Vegas, uh, we've already talked a little bit about TwitchCon. Uh, that's, we're going to see the playoffs in San Diego. Yes, so the playoff was a very interesting and challenging uh, discussion for us internally. Yeah. We ended up having actually three different uh, scenarios where either we were going to held that in New York, which was my favorite place. We had two different uh, venues in New York uh, to make something very unique. Uh, and there was a lot of political uh, things involved, so it didn't happen the way I wanted. Then we had San Diego with TwitchCon, and we had another venue in Las Vegas as well. We end up choosing San Diego and uh, TwitchCon because of course we are very close to the Twitch community, first of all, and because we are trying to get closer and closer to the esports industry, esports players, esports fans, uh, we believe that TwitchCon makes sense. So we're gonna have the cube, the, the famous, I don't know, but uh, hopefully it will be famous one day. Uh, so <laughs> the cube, which is a 20 feet by 20 feet by 20 feet stage arena or signature arena, where you're gonna have the players playing in the cube, 
In the TwitchCon, we have a bit of uh, bleachers and audience around it, so we're going to try to do something a bit unique. Can you explain a bit more about the 3v3 format that we're going to have as well? Yeah, I mean, I will explain a little bit, but not too much. Okay. Uh, the 3v3, we, I mean, wh what we try to do with GPL is promoting poker and trying to make poker exciting to watch. What we are missing right now, even in the existing format of GPL, is the adrenaline. And, and I do believe that we have to improve what we've done for the last eight, uh, eight weeks as well. How can we try to engage more and create more adrenaline for the players and for the fans? One of the things we can do live is, a bit, is to be a bit more creative. And what I wanted to see on the camera uh, when the players are going to compete for the playoff and the final is actually the team members having like high five or ch uh, chest bump or that kind of things. And to achieve that, to create a real team spirit, we decided to create a format that is specific for the playoff and the final. That's called 3v3, play, uh, 3v3 poker. And just imagine you have three players on one side of the table, three players on the other side of the table. They are part of two different teams, obviously. They are dealt with the same deck. They are seeing the same board. There is one board on the table. It's a digital table. But they are playing three different heads up. So you have three different heads up playing at the same time with the same deck, the same board, and the teammate knows the cards of the, uh, I mean, the, yeah, the players know the card of their teammates. So it provides more information for the players. It changes the odds and the way of thinking. And we believe that that kind of game is going to help to create a lot of adrenaline, a lot of drama on the camera and for the players as well. Okay. What do you think the potential is like for the GPL on Twitch? Will it go out on any other networks, hopefully? I mean, tw Twitch is our main partner right now. Twitch is our main distribution. Um, you know, we, we are eight weeks old. Uh, there is other very successful uh, channels that are operated since few years, especially in poker. Uh, they are our friends, we work with most of them, but they are very, very, very good. And we have to learn how to avoid, first of all, to compete against them. So we have to learn how to avoid scheduling that is at the same time of very successful channel. And the second thing is we have to learn that there is a huge potential. When you see when you see other channels uh, that has like thousands of thousands of um, concurrent viewers at the same time, it shows that there is an appetite for poker. So we need to improve. We need to learn. We need to try. Uh, we need to improve how we can do that. I don't have the perfect formula. We don't have the perfect formula. But we build a platform. We build a, a foundation to achieve that. And, and I believe that we were very lucky with the casters that we managed to get, with uh, Sam and Griffin that started, with you and Eric that we're gonna see as well in Las Vegas. Um, I'm happy to announce as well that Joe Stapleton will join us for a few weeks in Las Vegas and we will be with you and, uh, and Eric. Um, oh, I don't have to put up with Joe, do I? Yeah, it's gonna be tough, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's cool. So there, there is, what, what we've seen is media, I mean, the, the, the poker media wants GPL. Poker players who played GPL seems to enjoy it. And that's a very important step. And we need to keep trying to excite them. And to achieve that, we have the, the, the studio in Vegas, the playoff, and the final in Wembley in London. And then we need to grow that. We need to invest more money. We need to create more content. Because at the end, it's all about narrative, narrative and storyline. And in many ways, we are failing. We need to do more. But well, step by step, we need to grow. As a viewer yourself, because you've watched most of the hours, yeah. I think, that we've broadcast. Um, are you happy with it uh, predominantly? What have been your favorite bits? I'm not a poker fan. I, I mean, I'm a casual fan. I mean, I don't watch poker. I barely watch EPTs because I don't have time and because I'm, I'm not a player myself at all. Um, I actually did enjoy uh, watching GPL, not every match, of course, but I did enjoy watching GPL. I think that our two casters did a great job. Uh, even for me, as a non-English speaker, and a non-poker core fan, I actually enjoyed it. Uh, I've seen hands of players that were like fabulous, mm -hmm. and, and the way we were selling them, we were storytelling them, uh, were, were, were great. So yes, I, I really enjoyed it. I feel that we need to create, and I don't have the answer to that, we need to create something that brings more adrenaline, um, so more excitement, maybe faster pace, I don't know. Um, so we have to work on that and we're going to do that for the next, in the next few months, obviously. But the first experience, the first outcome is very positive, yes. And of course, I have things that I don't like, 
like you do and like people on Twitch don't and like everybody does. But uh, I really believe that our first eight weeks were a good step, uh, but it's just the first step of a very long story. Yeah. Obviously, you're friends with a lot of players as well, yeah. uh, all the players at the GPL. What are the feedback from them like? It's very interesting. I mean, one of my biggest fear, of course, was the reaction of the players. How are they going to engage towards the platform? How are they going to talk on the cameras? Because, by the way, one of the things that people misunderstood is we never, I mean, people think that we bring the camera the second day as a reaction of the first day. That's not true. The cameras and the investment actually we made, because it's very expensive to bring live camera on the table, was made like a few months ago. And we always wanted to bring that in the content. It's just that we waited the second day to ensure that everything was working well. Um, I think that out of the 72 players, actually 71 players that played till now, I would say that 50 to 55 are very much engaged into the game. Mm -hmm. There is some players that played only once and some players that you, you can see they are not totally yet into it. But when the stakes are going to be um, more relevant, meaning that when teams are going to be on the edge of being eliminated, that's going to make a big difference. And both from the viewer point of view and the player point of view, the, more, the, the closer we go to the playoff, the more the stakes are going to be big and the more engaged fans and players are going to be. And anything else that you would like to add? I can talk for hours, so <laughs> if you have any other question, you can tell me. No, I mean, I would like to thank everybody that has been involved uh, in, the, in the project till now, from the, the team here behind the cameras, in the front of the camera, the, the players as well, our partners, our distribution. Um, as I said, this is just the first eight weeks of our project. There is much more to come. Uh, we have a lot of surprise and ideas that we want to bring on board. Just going to take time. But I do believe that we managed to create a foundation, uh, a platform that's going to grow. Can you see as far as season two yet? Is that in your mind? Yes, it's... it's <laughs> When was it? Uh, last July, actually, when, so like a year ago, when we started to plan GPL, um, I spoke to one of my best friends who works for Poker Stars, actually, and we say, how spoiled are we now? We have to think like one year in advance, uh, while usually I think, that, uh, I mean, I think like two years, uh, like in a two years time frame, uh, two years, two weeks time frame. We actually have to think in season two already. I can tell you that we're going to add uh, six teams, six franchises already in, uh, in season two. Uh, we're going to have a bit more live event as well because the good thing is we have built a 4,000 square feet uh, TV studio in Las Vegas. So with this, this studio in Malta, with the second studio in, in, uh, in Vegas, we're going to have much more ability to produce content, meaning that we're going to be able to, uh, to have much more games being played over the weeks. And I invite, and I'm going to talk to the camera for that, I invite and I beg people that are watching right now Twitch, if they can go on globalpokerleague.com and on the bottom right, there is a little pop-up coming up with uh, a little one-question survey. Please tell us what you think about GPL. Tell us what you don't like, tell us, tell us what you like, and tell us what you would like to have. Because at the end, we do that in order for people who watch Twitch, uh, Twitch and other platform, of course, to enjoy it. But in the next six months and the next year, we're going to invest a lot in terms of content uh, because we're going to have much more resources, technical resources, space uh, to, uh, to achieve more. And finally, are you a Paris Aviator? I was very happy that they were at the <laughs> beginning, uh, that they were leading actually the um, Europe, uh, European team, uh, the European conference. Um, I have actually no, I'm not bought to any team, I cannot yeah, actually. Right. Um, <laughs> I just cannot wait to see who's going to win. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Alex Dreyfus, CEO here of the Global Poker League. Well, I'm missing those two jokers at the desk, so let's go and find them. Griff Graff, over to you. Dog and the boss, man. Final week of the Global Poker League. I'm Griffin Benger. This is Sam Grafton. We're very excited for the set of matches we got for you uh, this evening. Um, Quite a week last week, though. Um, a lot of big matches, some upsets, some sweeps. Um, uh, but let's start with the six max. Let's get to, let's get to the highlights. I mean, I'm excited to, to, to jump right in. Here we go. We started with uh, the Eurasia Conference. Um, this particular one, Dong Guo. This is a very controversial hand here, Sam, um, with uh, obviously the time bank situation. Dong Guo doing whatever he can to get the money in there, but the Chinese internet. Yeah. 
Now, obviously, um, if your internet is dodgy, do not let yourself get in yeah. a situation where you're on the hot seat. Into the Folding hot seat. the queens because he couldn't press the, the call button quick enough and was very fortuitous. Uh, Leno won that match, seven points for the Aviators. Uh, Wo Dong, great showing again. Heads up against the legend Chris Mormon. Mormon won online. What a legend. Runs out for the full house. First win. Win for Mormon. Yeah, 10 points total for Duo, uh, Guo Dong. Obviously, a great heat for him. This was a very, very interesting hand that happened uh, in the uh, America, uh, America's Conference. Federer yeah. holds, deciding to min race here. Yeah, really we, we, we talk about ICM. We talk about turning chips into points. And Federer holds making a fold here. Um, it's plus chip EV. He wins chips by making this call. But because of the point situation, Makes the fold, hoping Mike, Mono, um, Mike McDonald will beat Tyler Kenny, and Tyler Kenny eliminated in fourth. Really interesting situation. Doesn't come up very often, but Fed on making a good fold. This was one of the best folds we've seen here at the Global Poker League. Mike McDonald betting for value on the river, getting shoved on, and making an absolutely phenomenal fold to preserve his tournament life, and going on to win the heat, and really just shows what a class act yeah, he is. Yeah, Mike McDonald, an absolute superstar. This was, uh, of course, Lil Wayne, Wheezy Baby, against Andre the Giant. We had a lot of fun with this match in particular. Uh, Wei Zhang finally showing up, uh, able to take two of three games from the very, very tough Andre Patachak. This was a flip early on in, uh, er, sorry, later on in one of the matches um, that was won by uh, Wei Zhang. Igor Kurganov, Darius Summit, San Martino. We did a little something different here, Sam. Yeah, uh, let these guys speak. We took a back seat, opening up the mics uh, between these two so they could banter back and forth. We will be looking to do this whenever, you know, um, the players feel like they have good enough rapport, they want to add that dimension um, and connect with each other and connect with the fans in a different way. Um, very successful in this incident, in this uh, example, because these guys, real funny characters. Yeah, and every single time there was an all-in on the river, you never know if it was a bluff or not, and they were really uh, you know, energized. It was a lot of fun to watch and gave us a little break in the booth as well. Davide Katai against Sorel Mizzy. Sorel, obviously, was always a great storyteller, seeming to be at any Starbucks anywhere around yeah, the world. Debut week uh, for Sorel Mizzy and a real immediate impact on the GPL. Yeah, a very surprising sweep against the extremely tough Davide Katai, who, uh, you know, had his little puppy there that was showing us our, the dog. We always love the animals here at the Global Poker League. Sorel, huge sweep for the Berlin Bears. They really needed it. Yeah, early feather in the cap for Sorrell. My boy Jake Cody, my boy Jason Wheeler, two top MTT players, and it was Jason that got the better of this match. And they were going for the gusto early on. You can see here at just the 300, 600 level, willing to get in the 86,000 chips. That's over, uh, you know, 120 big blinds early on there. So both guys willing to three bet for value, deciding to five bet all in Jake Cody. He was flipping, but Jason Wheeler able to take that. And, uh, you know, this was a really, really interesting hand where Jake Cody made a phenomenal fold. Yeah, um, Jason Wheeler is, uh, no, made a, made a call, yeah? Made a huge no, Jason win. Wheeler made this three-barrel bluff here. Jake yeah. Cody, phenomenal call. Yeah, yeah. Cody made a great call here. And uh, two top poker talents. Um, you know, Jason Wheeler made a big impact on the GPL the two times we've seen him. The Bulldog um, Among Wolves. A win, you know, it's pretty impressive. A win in the six-backs format. A win now in the heads-up format as well. Yeah. Uh, Felipe Mojave, a huge underdog here against the extremely talented early MVP favorite, Olivier Bousquet in Jamaica with his beautiful girlfriend. A lot of fun to watch here. This hand, though, Huge cooler for Felipe Mojave, yeah. Vamos Ramos. Yeah, he tanked for a long, long time. Uh, wasn't an uh, easy spot for him. Eventually made a call, took a shot to try and get the win against Busquet. As we can see, um, really unfortunate, the case 10 coming off and ran out in a way that There's still had top pair, five, yeah. pair top kicker. And here, Ramos raising the flop. And with Busquet having top pair, he managed to get all the chips in, the cooler going his way, but he really maximized. Yeah, and absolutely. And again, the second hand of this match. So, you know, this was the third match. It was 1-1. Olivier Busquet has, had been undefeated in the heads-up format, and suddenly it was all over in just two hands. It really goes to show that sometimes, you know, the cards just fall the way of, uh, of the player that favors them. Jaffe against LeFrancois, we had a lot of fun with this. You shall not pass <laughs> against uh, Jonathan Jaffe. A real showcase of talent here. Um, and, uh, you know, it was really, really fun to watch these Yeah, days. we've come to take it for granted. But really, um, for hardcore poker fans, this is such an exciting match to see really, really two of the best poker players in the world, particularly in the heads-up format uh, with their whole cards revealed. A real, real treat um, Top, top poker talent. Uh, Jaffe, snap checking back this uh, Trip Kings, you can see. Uh, really knows where he's at. Yeah, really exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that was, you know, that was an exemplified how the match went Fantastic down. Fantastic bluff here by Pascal later on in that match. Just 10 hands in. Uh, really showing that he's willing to put the pedal to the metal 
deciding to rep the king, having absolutely turned no equity, and just firing it off. What a river bluff here. Yeah, went for a huge overbet on this river. Um, I mean, again, this is something we've seen time and time again from these top poker player talents. They have a, a wide, wide range of bet size, including um, 2.5 times X pot on the river, putting Jaffe they got moves, <laughs> Sam. in the Hurt Locker uh, with the Queen 5 particularly. Yeah, um, again, you can see Jaffe, a lot of contemplation there, but not willing to make the big call. Uh, great and, slew and of it matches was, last And week. it was Jaffe who came out on top in the end, yes. uh, getting the first win uh, for the San Francisco Which is Rush. something we expected from him early on, and unfortunately the cards had not really fallen his way. Uh, great character in the GPL, obviously. A little yeah, shout-out yeah, to us uh, the week before. Um, so, I mean, today we got a lot of interesting matches. We start with the six max. Uh, we got Feder Holtz back in action. We got a little Joa Bauer with the with the, with the scratch. We got Liv Bury in action. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of exciting players to uh, to look for today. Yeah, six max is always a great day. A uh, lot of action. You know, a lot of points to be won. Um, teams want to set themselves up going yep. into Vegas with you know. Uh, you know, the the guys who are struggling a little bit want to close the gap on the player positions. Yep. Other play, other teams looking to cement their position at the top of the table. Um, but as always, a lot of really, really great poker talent in the mix and today. We got, and we got a favorite here uh, for today, Raiden Khan. Yeah, we've got Raiden. We'll be going for the fatality. Yeah. Uh, Just uh, in a bit. Who, who, who won, has won a six-max match already. Let's send it over to the lounge uh, where Laura Cornelius is going to tell us where we're at. Corn dog. Thank you, boys. Well, let's uh, talk about the standings, shall we? Because last week, the Moscow Wolverines came into the week with an absolutely dominating lead of 14 points. It's been closed up a little bit since then, though. Those London Royals, thanks to Chris Mormon, uh, winning the uh, second six max of last week. He picked up seven points for them and cleaned the gap up a little bit. Now, just eight points between the Wolverines and the London Royals. Paris Aviators, who were leading the conference for quite some time, are now in third. But anything could change. As you can see, there's just one point separating them, second and third place. The Hong Kong Stars are four points behind the Paris Aviators. And we saw Guo Dong with two second place finishes in those six maxes last week. The Berlin Bears are on 64 points, 10 points behind the Hong Kong stars. We're going to see Mr. Bill Perkins back in action today. That should be amusing. And the Rome Emperors are still in sixth place at the bottom of the table on just 58 points. We saw Todd Brunson unable to get much going for those guys last week. Now, uh, over to the Americas Conference, of course. Uh, we will be seeing action from both the sides today. Uh, the Montreal Nationals still leading the way. They are seven points clear of the New York Rounders, who came in as the leaders of the week last week. Uh, New York Rounders on 81 points. LA Sunset are climbing to the top, although Olivier Bousquet lost his first ever heads-up match last week. He was undefeated until that point. Felipe Ramos was the man to do it. Uh, but lucky for Olivier Bousquet, he was on the beach, so it wasn't so bad for him. Sao Paulo Mets are in 70, with 70 points in fourth place. Nine points still separating them, despite Felipe Ramos beating Bousquet last week in heads up. The Las Vegas Moneymakers are in fifth place. They have 63 points and are seven points behind the Sao Paulo Mets. We're going to see Jonathan Little in action today. Uh, Anthony Zeno was supposed to be playing the first game, but he won't, won't be now. It will be Jonathan Little for both games this evening. And San Francisco Rush still at the bottom of the table. It's sixth place, 61 points, but only two points between Las Vegas and San Francisco. Thanks to Jonathan Jaffe winning his very first heads up match last week. He got six points for the San Francisco Rush. He is going to be back in action today in the six max. So we'll see how he can fare in that format and hopefully win some points for Faraj Xhaka's side. Faraj Xhaka will also be in action. He'll be playing the second six max game this evening. Let's take a look at the GPL's top scorers so far. Liv Bousquet still in the number one spot. He has now climbed, he has 36 points after picking up those three points that, uh, when he played Felipe Ramos last week. 
And now we will see him back in action this week. Also, he will be playing Tom Marchese heads up on Thursday. Anatoly Filatov is back in action today, though. He, they have, he has 33 points, so we could see Filatov take the lead as the top scorer after playing two six-max matches this evening. As I said, two first places. First place means seven points, so he has the ability to take 14 points if necessary. Uh, Fedor holds in third place, is climbing up the table. 31 points for him after some success uh, doing the clean sweep two weeks ago in heads up and some good uh, run, the good in the uh, six max matches. Felipe Ramos at 30 points, so just one point behind Fedor. Nananoko, 24 points for him. He should be back in action tomorrow versus Elki heads up. And Alex Luno, who won the first six max match for the Paris Aviators last week is down there as well in with six uh, points there for that one. Right, over to the desk, over to the boys. Uh, Griff Graf, where are you? We're here, we're here. We're the boys. Griff and Sam. GPL. Preview time. Six max. I'm excited. Always. I'm always excited, yes. It's early, early days in the week, as you like to say. Early days. Like first show... Beginning of the week, I mean, I'm pumped. Yeah, of course, Scoop coming to an end. A lot of these guys have had a grueling few weeks. Yep. Some have won a lot of money. Some have lost a lot of money. Yeah. And uh, I'm somewhere in between. <laughs> I like I played a couple Sundays and like I definitely lost money, but on like small spectrum. Yeah, yeah. of course. We're and not, it wasn't my money I lost. We're you know? not we're not grinders anymore. No, no. Just no. turning up for the Sundays. Here's the lineup. Um, lot of interesting characters. Darius Sammartino making his debut in this particular format. Gonna be really interesting to see how this top poker talent performs in this particular format. And your boy, General Mike Leia, yeah, uh, someone that baby. has registered points in both the six max format and the heads up format uh, in action as well. I know you're a big Mike Leia fan. Oh yeah, the Heisenberg of the GPL, he's ready to go. He is the danger. Uh, very excited to see him back in action. Um, hopefully he's wearing a little hat or something. Yeah, you know, very, very strong goatee. poker yeah. performer, Mike Leia. Yeah, someone, the general. Yeah, the general someone himself. that's sticky, uh, someone that's stubborn, yep. someone that's Intensely combative. Two scoop titles over the last few no. weeks as well. Come yeah, on. I saw the one. He won a second one. Yeah, he. he Dude, got a the guy doesn't stop winning, man. Yeah, I'm telling course. you, he's my man. Can play. Doesn't all matter what the game. The games is. Uh, and five million in tournament earnings. No mean feat. Look at those results, pal. including a, a, lot of results. a high roller win. Uh, this is a very, very tough uh, match in the Eurasia Conference. Sometimes talk about how Eurasia can be a little bit weaker on occasion uh, than the Americas division, mm -hmm. but that's certainly not the case today. Uh, Mike Lear is going to have his work cut out for him, uh, but you know, certainly Paris Aviators. Any day Mike Leia is yeah. performing for them is a day they can expect points. Yeah, I mean, you you, gotta, you you almost gotta think, you know, the Montreal Nationals missed a good spot in drafting him, but that team obviously so strong with the likes of Pascal LaFrancois, Chouan Liu. Um, but Mike Leia was drafted by the Paris Aviators. Um, you know, great spot for him. Really great, really savvy pick, obviously, by Fabrice Soulier. Sure. And, uh, and excited to see him in action today. Let's talk about Darius Sammartino. Yes, let's move on to the Sammartino. Um, obviously, a win last week against Kurganov. Yep. Two Two top t poker talents there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of rapport from them. Yeah. Great that Dario, so much you know, not in his first yeah. language, was bantering and, you know, showing a little bit of I'm that, yeah, I'm of that to, yeah. Italian personality, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. the Italian guys, I feel, have such energy, such exuberance. I'm starting to think it's part of the deal that the only way they'll play in the GPL is if they're playing with each other. I mean, they're right beside each other in the lineup. You saw <laughs> yeah, that, right? Yeah, of course, Usual yeah. suspects. 71 results, not a ton of wins, but this guy is a regular of the super high roller circuit. Uh, so many fun hands. He's six bet all in with five three suited and a 50K the other day. Uh, this is a guy who will go for the gusto. Such a threat. And uh, he actually won the uh, the high roller yeah. in the scoop for uh, 750K, was it? I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like we're making these figures up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're new to poker, it sounds ridiculous that these guys could have won so much What's and be willing to play for yeah. points. But seven... Um, 720k in the 21k high roller scoop also came eighth in Monte Carlo. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, you and me moan about variance when it comes to our results. There's so much luck. Yeah. I but mean, I listen to you moan. <laughs> this is a guy who is proving that skill in tournament poker Absolutely. can, uh, you know, trump uh, luck and fortune. He's posting results it, seemingly It does everywhere. sound like absurd amounts of money. It's like, yeah, Absol he won 720k the other day. Uh, the format absurd. video, how much is it combined that they've all won? Over 300 million. Over uh, 300 million in combined amazing. scores. Igor Kurganov is next. Let's get to Igor. Uh, this is the uh, first round selection of the London Royals. No, you know, there's no no subtext with that pick or anything. It's not like, uh, you know, Liv is, uh, is, 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 her par is a partner or anything like that. 
obviously such a super talent, super high roller. Um, 52 results. You see the win rate of nine wins. This guy, when he does well, he really does well. And, um, uh, you know, got, got, got to see his personality late last week in that heads up match we talked about with Dario Sammartino. Yeah, and already over <laughs> a, a million in winnings Always just smiling. in 2016. Um, came fourth, I believe it was, in the 100K in Monte mm -hmm. Carlo. Um, one of the best players in the in league. The game. Yeah, yeah, was always going to go as a first round draft pick. Absolutely. Uh, let's move on to the next player in this heat, Anatoly Filatov, yeah. the general manager of the Moscow Wolverines. Always a smile on this kid's face. Um, you know, not a ton of earnings comparatively to maybe some other players in the field, but someone who has such a presence online and has really made his presence felt in the first seven weeks of the Global Yeah, Championship. of course, 33 points is a massive tally. Absolutely doing Ooh. the business as the general manager of the Moscow Wolverines. And such an entertainer in the fullest sense of the world. Yes. Entertaining in the way he approaches the game. Mm. You know, uh, all guns blazing style and also an entertaining presence on the webcam, yeah. celebrating, cheering, interacting with the fans, uh, both the Russian-speaking fans and the, and the English-speaking fans. True story. I real, had, real legend. I actually had a phone call with him last night. We chatted yeah. for 10 minutes. It was great. Loved it. Bill Perkins, though. Bill the Thrill. Oh, we love a little Bill the Thrill. Yeah, here the Bill GPL. Perkins, uh, an amateur, um, put to the test in this very, very tough, tough form, format. Someone who likes to play a lot of hands, uh, someone who likes to play a lot of speculative hands, yeah. he's going to need to sort of... Uh, Connect with the board, like connect with some yeah, flops yeah, yeah. Yeah, if he's going to sure. survive. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, you know, we we're not going to pretend that he can keep up with them in the sense that you know that he's going to go toe for toe, but he is going to mess with people. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is someone that this is someone that like sometimes he knows what he's doing. He probably shouldn't be doing it, but it's yeah, so fun exactly, for him, and that's, that's exactly so much true. fun to watch. It's not yeah. that he doesn't understand the game, but yeah. when he's got four or five suited, he wants to see yeah, a flop. I want to see what's going on here. Uh, but let's move on to Raiden Khan. From the Hong Kong Stars. Yeah, Raiden, One of my favorites. Yeah, Raiden massively delivered in, uh, I believe it was the first week, where he knocked out every single player in his first GPL match to register seven points. We've only seen him in action once since then, uh, where, again, he registered three points. So, you know, we're still learning about Raiden. But yeah. the Hong Kong Stars is absolutely massive for them that he does register some points. I mean, the, the teams in fourth position, just inside the playoff spots, yeah. it's absolutely crucial that each and every time their players go out, even if they don't get wins, that they do register points and maintain that buffer, uh, in this case, over Berlin Bears and Rome Emperors. Buffer maintenance. I love it. Buffer, ma maintain your buffer, right? <laughs> uh, again, this is the last week here at the GPL. Sam no, and I had not, a great time. It's, it's not the last week, though. Vegas no, it is, is for, coming. For, this, for the, well, the summer series, obviously. A lot yeah, to be excited of course, about. Of course. TwitchCon. Twitch. I mean, it's the last week of us at this booth at this junction of time. Yeah, it feels. I mean, it's the end of a like it's the end of an era, an eight-week era, mini era, mini era. Yeah, yeah, there's bigger eras to come. Yeah, eras for days. This is just a mini era in a bigger GPL epoch. <laughs> are we going to Laura now? Or are we going to the match? I think. I think we're going right to the match right now. It's yeah. so exciting. I, I wasn't sure. It's because you like Laura so much. You always, there's a little bit yeah. of this, like, I know, I, I little, little like, maybe dog. we're going to send it over to Laura, but no. we're going to get into the action. Perfect. Pew. Billy the Perkinator. Perkinator. Okay, we got a fan base. I got, got fans. Let's go. Sick dress sense from Anatoly Filatov as you well. Can see yeah. what I have. <laughs> Some fangirls and fanboys in the background there for uh, for Billy P. Cheering topless is encouraged by the fans. I heard. If you're new to the GPL, we should remind you: Bill Perkins, very very successful hedge fund manager and venture capitalist, someone who's made a tidy sum speculating. Other, speculating with other people's money, much like right much like you do at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Mike is using that. I don't think we're someone that gone. does play hundred thousand dollar buy-ins, indeed, possibly even million dollar buy-ins, um, just for the ruffles. Yeah, uh, for the for the lulls, <laughs> for the kicks. Put this in case. Doesn't seem like we're going. So this man, we're like a G6, fine. is not just don't a soul. It wrong. It's, it's a lifestyle thing. <laughs> Okay, we're waiting. Raiding Khan, perhaps a victim of that uh, Chinese internet that we saw costing uh, Guodong some uh, points the other week. Yep. Bill Perkins is concerned. He wants to play the 10 3. He wants to play the kitchens. Yeah, Raiden might have went to the bathroom. Peace. Raiden just popping off in the Netherverse, in the Mortal Kombat universe, just. Uh, Quick stop off. And look at Anatoly, he's eager as well. Switch your internet oh. connection. 
I gotta say, I gotta be candid with you here. A lot of shit hands on this first uh, first <laughs> deal. For sure, for sure. <laughs> like a lot a of six cuck out there. looking absolutely massive. <laughs> yeah. my, oh, here we go, Bill Perkins. Showing us a little bit of what that millionaire Hashtag lifestyle. lifestyle. Yeah. If you look very, very closely, you will see uh, Drake in the background uh, beyond that mirror, <laughs> beyond that window. Drake <laughs> is in the house. <laughs> Him and Bill, good friends. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk for a moment I about the standings in yes. the Eurasia di Division. Let's do it. We let's have the standings. general manager of the Moscow Wolverines in action today. Anatoly Filatov. The managers did not have to pick themselves. Several managers did not. For instance, Phil Gruesome of the Berlin Bears. Anatoly had faith in himself, uh, f faith in his compatriots mm -hmm. from uh, Russia and Ukraine. And uh, they've got off to an amazing start. And Filatov, a big, big reason for that. Yeah. Say. I mean, it would have been great to see uh, to see Philip Gruesome in action, but the guy's, guy's got crops to build. Mate, exactly. He's got yeah. crops to grow. He's growing cucumbers in the Malta, in the streets of Malta. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, Filatov has um, been a real star of this, yes, of this mini era, as we're calling it. Oh, I love that. And, Loving the mini uh, era. you know, we oh. weren't sure, you know, amongst um, a plethora of poker oh, superstars. Did I use that yet on air? <laughs> a plethora of poker stars. Um, you know, Filatov, someone that has made a real, a real impression. Yeah. Absolutely. That's um, so much fun to watch. Because, you know, one of the th great things about uh, GPL is, you know, we're, pu we're highlighting again people we already knew were mm -hmm. superstars, someone like Igor Kurganov, and then, you know, some of the stars of the future emerging, perhaps Alan Tully. You know, this might actually be a good opportunity to uh, tell everyone about uh, what's happening tomorrow. We might uh, be missing a certain someone on well, the booth. Well, I'm taking a day off, but we got Something Roland in the booth, B. Staying on message here at the GPL. We just decided as the long B as we talk, and he's we actually coming here right now to give me a toy. That's Roland Boothby sneaking over here to give me a Catch toy a for glimpse future of coverage. The B word. Roland, Roland, Roland Boothby is going to be in the Boothby tomorrow. Um, all kidding aside, uh, Sam unable to attend because of the fire drill. <laughs> you hear about that? Yeah, we have a fire drill here tomorrow. I'm when not inside. When? Oh no, that's next week. Fire safety paramount here. Raiden Khan could be on the hot seat before we know it. <laughs> and we know how the Hong minutes, Kong stars guys. deal with the hot seat. They do a lot of clicking. <laughs> but never get there. It's a slight technical hitch here, guys. At the beginning, Raiden Khan, uh, pretty sure that it's internet his end. Um, obviously, we're bringing together players from all over the world. Uh -oh, um, my internet, what is this connection? is getting a little squirrely. Squirrely internet. I mean, we've got to say... Um, Berlin Bears, so great that they did introduce Bill Perkins. Such a character. Yeah. Um, you know, there's so whenever there's a TV invitational, I mean, he is invited yeah. because he's such a... Such I actually presence. invite him over for Game of Thrones night every Sunday. Hasn't shown up once. So if there's a TV night, poker or otherwise, there's a TV Bill, night, you're Bill, invited. Bill, invite us to your place. We will come. Yes. I've never seen Game of Thrones. I'm happy to start right from episode <laughs> one with you. You know you'd do it too, All for right. sure. Um, let's talk about some other people yes. in this lineup. Um, let's general talk about the set I'm building. General for Con Mike. Right now. I mean, if you guys could see off off camera, Griffin is basically playing with some toys. But uh, General Mike Leia, someone that you always hype up. Yes. Um, for and a someone reason. that is, you know, doing really, really well uh, in the GPL. Someone I that obviously loves, loves the game. You know, straight after toys. scoop yeah. into the mix. Already registered again. Mixed 22 city. points is a very, very sizable contribution. Uh, like 78 points total for Paris Right, Ryan has so an yeah. issue. Oh, Mike Leah, also right someone now. that I think Here is we go. The Mike Leah I fall. Mike okay. Anatoly, bit of respect. He's a YouTube leader. And here we go. We're, we are actually off. Off to the races. Okay, we got a game going now. Let's there it is. Let's get a ace eight. Awesome. I would raise Dario San Martino. All right. The three X is not going to put off San Martino with King Ten suited, and both players catching a pair. Catch <laughs> that pair, Dario. But right now it ain't enough. Anatoly gonna want to continuation. 
bet this board with almost 100% of his range, therefore picks a very small sizing. More hands you're going to see bet, the smaller sizing you want to pick in general. Also a very stable board. Okay, the board is very good for me, the ace high board, so I have a top pair with no kicker, but this is the bottom versus big blind, so I would bet a turn here too. Filatov does bet again. Let's see how San Martino values King-10 on this board. No flush draw, but Filatov definitely could fire twice with all his gut shots. Jairo uh, is just check calling me twice. I would check the river, but the 8 is coming, so I have two pair right now. And this is an easy bet on the river. Filatov so if he has an ace, like a ace 10... Any wicker race, he would definitely pay, pay it for me. I'm not sure, maybe he folds his deuce, but I don't care. Maybe he just defend his jack and he would definitely call with his jack here, so I would be that big. Anatoly, betting huge on the river. Yeah, going to be a bit more polarized on this river, um, as you heard. Um, he would check back ace-8 if the 8 hand comes. So probably not going to fire three times with his ace-deuce through ace-6. Um, so able to pick a bit more of a large sizing. Bill Perkins studying the hand very closely as a beautiful woman has fallen asleep on his shoulder. Par for the course for uh, Mr. G6. Ah, yeah, and San Martino okay, does fold the king-10. Um, Such a neat. Understandably so. Blocking. Some of those straight draws that we were talking about, they're going to comprise the majority of Anatoly's bluffs. Comprise the majority of Anatoly's bluffs. Sometimes I just love when you string sentences together. <laughs> do you, like, I know you go down to that coffee shop before the thing and, like, you do a little prep. You know, everyone, you got to prep for a show. Yeah. But do you, do you prep things like that or that's off the cuff? That's off the cuff, bruv. Oh, I can't off know Off the that. cuff, bruv? Come, come on. <laughs> like, this is all, like... You got something going on. No, you spend no. your weekends. You tell me these stories. Oh, I went to Valletta with my girlfriend. I did this <laughs> and that. Come on. You're prepping. <laughs> what you off the cuff, bruv. <laughs> off the cuff, bruv. <laughs> and the butchers have arrived for Darius San Martino. Uh, no one got anything much in the blinds, but I don't know. Bill Perkins. Bill Perkins, yeah. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. I mean, he's had to wait way longer than he feels comfortable. Oh, oh boom. Well, there we uh, go, In the Bill. zone Good. today. Nice, Bill. Bit of discipline. Loving it. I mean, put it this way. He's looking out at that beautiful view yeah. on his balcony. He's yeah. got a... I, I'm he's getting a great neck, 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 neck uh, tickle right yeah, now. He's going to play. I love a good neck tickle. Solid. Totally yeah. can empathize with a good ne neck tickle. And Perkins with a diamond and a gutter ball. Probably. You might even call it a nutter gutter. The nutter gutter, as we like to call it. And Kurganov does have bottom pair. <laughs> the turn improves Perkins. A four or uh, eight now will make him a straight. Can't win with this hand at showdown. Could be a situation where you want to fire big again on the turn. Does get the job done for a half pot bet. I think in general, I'd love to see Bill pick a bigger size, sizing on a dynamic board, but uh, against bottom pair. Gonna go through. Yeah. And Raiden will spring into action with the ace ten of hearts and Evil. Bill Perkins. Wasting no time. Yeah. Not folding pocket fours. No. I hope we're gonna make a huge re raise here and I will fold my. My hand is this also I would defend, but I don't like this hand at all, so I fold here. Igor using the blockers, as we like to call them, to squeeze pre-flop. Um, a lot of less experienced pros would uh, just flick it in here and try to spike something. Bill Perkins definitely going to flick it. Ooh, but interesting. Discipline fold. Yeah, Bill Perkins comes to play uh, today. I think he mm. realizes, as Sorrell did, the seriousness of the situation for the Berlin Bears. Definitely. Ten points adrift of the playoff spots. For and, sure. um, you know, as much as he loves to enjoy himself when he's playing his own money, perhaps aware that he's playing here for a team and a franchise. Definitely. Power play. <laughs> nice squeeze from Kurganov. Dario Sammartino, we'll let's go of the ace stack. seven suited he under the gun. Loose, Interesting choice here early on. Um, actually, he can make totally uh, really tough folds like too. So uh, this guy is difficult 
to exploit for me here, so I don't expect him to make some crazy stuff. So Igor, um, I guess like his game is defend is depending on his mood right now, but he usually plays good. He's tough. Uh, Mike Lee, Mike Lee is more, in my opinion, he's more solid in the early stage. So I wouldn't ex I don't expect to do anything crazy from him. Uh, and Raiden is unpredictable here. I have no idea how he will play because he's Chinese, you know, Asians are crazy. So sometimes I I will check check it out. The Bill, uh, actually, the first game he played, he played to lose, but right now he plays more solid. So we'll see, we'll see. See the advantage there of Igor three betting the eight six suited rather than flatting again with the betting lead with those nut hands in his range when yeah. he three bets able to take Raiden off pocket nines on that ace ten board obviously not going to work out all the time when overcards don't flop uh, you can get yourself in some perilous situations but Kurganov picking up another nice pot with the inferior holding and bad spot for Anatoly oh, as Dario flops two pair. Uh, I usually don't see bad these boards, but in this matches in GPL, anything. players are playing more solid, more pot control pots. No one wants to bust in the first round, so I don't expect like check raising with a gut shot or something like that here. Like if he has something, he would just call most of the times. But okay, this is Dario. Dario. So I have kind of two back doors I could pay here, but not not now. I mean, I think the thing is, is um, Anatoly's making an assumption about the player pool in general, mm -hmm. and while that may be true, Daria Samatino very much a different kettle of fish. And come on, that's so prepared. Kettle of fish is phenomenal. Where do you come up with this stuff? <laughs> um, yeah, but also, I mean, he did have top two pair for right? sure. For so, sure. You never know. Dario Sammartino outturned here by Raiden Khan, who opts to check back. The river does bring in the flush, but of course, Dario, thinking he has enough showdown value here with the ace deuce, going to be put in a pretty difficult position here by Raiden Khan. One face with a bet, but I'm sure very aware that Raiden Khan is certainly capable of value betting an eight and maybe even a six on this river. That's an interesting spot. Dario definitely has ace. Dario does call with the ace deuce. Raiden takes down the pot with two pair. Nice little bounce back there from Raiden after losing a couple of early pots. Then the Raiden make the good value bet with his eight. Jack and Jill went up the hill for Igor Kurganov and gave him a pair under the gun. I would play a little bit more aggressive. Dang it, I wanted to play this. Come on, let me fall. Jaffe Poker on Twitch asks, is Bill Perkins hanging out with slightly younger Angelina Jolie? I'm not sure because she was wearing sunglasses, but it is certainly within the realm of possibility when it comes to Bill Perkins. I prefer to make the huge C bet here. And then I would just surrender. Okay. He's calling. So I surrender here. He may slow play, he's 
big pairs, small pairs. The, there is nothing on the turn, so I could, you know, he could fold on the ace queen here. So I will check. Filatov getting S10, himself into some trouble here, a making some assumptions or maybe about something else. So and Filatov he goes does under the gun. River range. a pair. Trouble, big trouble. Igor is going to have his miss flush draws, king queen suited, perhaps queen jack suited, that he will need to bluff on this river. And so Igor is betting here. I don't feel really, I don't really happy about this bet. He could have king queen of spades, like pocket nines or some pairs that he's trying to value bet against my ace king. So I would definitely uh, play here. Don't waste my time. Okay, I call. Yeah, it's oh. pocket jacks. Okay. Understandably so. If I don't hit, of course I fall. Filatov getting an unfortunate river there. Okay. That's not not a good deal for me now. And that is could turn out to be a pretty big pot for the London Royals, given that the Moscow Wolverines currently in first place with 87 points. London obviously behind in second place with 79. So the fact that that pot swung Igor's way, it's a great store start for Igor Kurganov and the Royals. And Hashtag standings relevance. Mate. Dario Sammartino turning a straight. Igor now drawing dead. Fortunately for Igor, it was the nine and not the ace that came. See how Dario values his straight. The flush has come in. But Dario does value bet the straight and Igor forced to fold. Perkins getting involved here with the queen nine off. And picks up the pot. Anatoly Filatov, now shorter, forced to play somewhat more sl snug. And this is going to spell trouble for Anatoly Filatov. No, no. Igor Kurganov with the ace king of spades on the button. Filatov with the ace eight suited, knowing that Igor's opening range on the button is going to be extremely wide despite Mike Leah being in the big blind. Igor likes to play hands and he's been playing a lot of them often. Yeah, most players will open in the range of 50, uh, 45 to 55% of hands in the spot. So ace eight suited comfortably ahead of that range. I could see Anatoly three bet folding, three bet calling, flatting. Even shoving, it's a bit too many chips, but there's a lot of ways that Filatov could play this hand, but I can guarantee you he's never putting it into the muck right away. Yeah. I would three bet fold. I mean, like, I could definitely fold this hand here. Wow. But it seems to me that it's better to three bet fold anyway. I don't expect Eager to bluff a lot in this, this spot, but... Very disciplined way to play the hand there. Losing really the minimum. Um, right now, <clears throat> the shortest one. Damn, that's, that's, that's not the way I expect it to go. Frustration for Filatov. <laughs> what do you call that? Uh, alliteration, yeah? When you use that. Yeah. That's great. Love that. Totally prepared, though. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my list of alliterative uh, uh, <laughs> Perkins will be pounding just saying Leo will be leaping not buying it <laughs> not off the cuff hashtag prepared Mike Leo with ace 10 taking a different approach to Filatov Raiden um, will be raiding you can see uh, Anatoly Filatov prefers to three bet bluff with hands like ace 10 and ace 8 Mike Leo happy to flat and go to a flop in this circumstance though absolutely dominated and Bill Perkins flopping top pair better kicker Leah destined to lose some more chips in this hand Leah um, has actually flatted to keep in aces he dominated uh, he has dominated one of the advantages to flatting the ace 10 is you keep in hands like ace 4 ace 5 suited um, Leah 
though, in real trouble on this occasion. And Bill Perkins, I'd love to see him go for value again. Mike Leo with very, very few eights in his nice. small blind flatting range. And he does fire. That's a good luck kiss. That's a good luck kiss. There we go. I'm just hoping he doesn't have, like, full house right now. Unfortunate oh. river here for Bill the Thrill. Chopping now with Mike Leah's ace 10 off. And I think this is a check back situation here, but I can't click check. Check! And they even gave the chips Lucky. to Mike Leah first. Seems unfair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was frustrating. Really unle All right. unlucky for Bill Let's Perkins. Good business with you over there, Mike. We said at the top of the show that card distribution was going to have to favor him in, yeah, in order for him to compete there. Seemed all set up for him to win a sizable mm -hmm. pot. Um, Cruel River. By the way, great to see uh, Mike Leah awesome. still able to uh, you know, lift his hands with all those bracelets he's winning. <laughs> um, still able to click so some buttons. As you can see in his picture, he has one. He's won two more this Definitely past Definitely missed, but I don't, I don't want to see bad here just because I have a lot of equity. Oh, just so it's not that good right now. Giving him the if three to right seven straight. Bad. I have to fold. I guess I have to fold, or I don't. So how many sevens he may have here? Like seven, eight, seven, nine, and ten, seven suited. Maybe s seven, a seven. That's 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 all. Philatov oh, does call, was getting an excellent price, but hmm. feeling Raiden Khan is polarized to just his 7x when he bets the turn. Probably could Queen bet his uh, deuces as well, and maybe even some two pairs. So, I have the Nuts Flash Bloker, and... Would I bluff here or not against the right end? And that's a tough spot for me. I usually have to bluff here. But he would never fold 7. And he will never fold 7. He will never fold the flush. But I mean, like, I still have to bluff. But I don't want to bust first. I mean... I may just call here too. That will be sick call. Philatov running through his options. Yeah, that that may be sick call here. Not if really I seeing call. too many hands he's beating here. Do you agree, uh, Sam? Yeah, it's got to be an 8x um, hands. Or it's better to fold. But can't have like might 9, even size up with his bluff. 7, okay, cool. And Filatov could have folded the turn. Certainly yeah. could have folded the river. A um, little bit too light a look up there, I think, from Anatoly. Slightly mm. overvaluing the Ace of Diamonds blocker. You know, I will say too, um, I think maybe a little bit of rush showing in Anatoly Filatov. We talked about how a you know an unsuccessful scoop can certainly uh, affect your play. I'm not entirely familiar with how Anatoly did, but he did mention a few weeks ago that he couldn't stop winning the GPL and he couldn't stop losing online, and that's sort of the nature of variance. So perhaps, you know, not a successful scoop, maybe getting into his head a little bit, and he's just a bit off his game. Obviously a phenomenal player, phenomenal Griffith, talent. Griffin Benja outing Filatov, confirmed yeah. no, Pusco. No, I'm not sure. No, no, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe no. he did have a good scoop, but I know how it feels, uh, you know, when you're losing, <laughs> you doubt yourself because I just do it all the time. I just constantly lose. Yeah, I think also perhaps overestimating what we can expect from Raiden. Khan. Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily think Raiden's gonna just have a bluff lift there. off with off there. Yeah, um, like I'm not even sure with his must bluffs, like eight X at hearts or whatever, that he always follows through yeah, for the I river agree. and yeah. that he always picks that sizing. Yeah, I think. And I th the other thing I want to mention is Anatoly, obviously looking a bit. Kind of embarrassed, I guess, because obviously it wasn't uh, it wasn't a call that went went his way. But every other decision he's made, three bet folding the ace eight suited, you know, making that call on the river with ace ten, 
they're really the tough spots, yeah. and he really makes the right calls. So he kind of feels maybe right now like he's not playing super well, but I really only think he's made one mistake. Yeah. Perkins firing twice with the sevens. A little bit unconventional to fire again there on the turn, but perhaps has stronger sense than most of where he is. Does have a lot of um, hands played against Igor Kurganov, you would imagine. Both of them fixtures on the I super high roller makes. circuit. The bill. Bill's raising the button. I have the Suda King. I would defend here. Well, this is. I have the gut shot and the overguard. It's usually shove, but. Yeah, I have to shove here. Bilatov donking all in for over. If he has a nice high, he would call. Me, but if he has like king high, queen high, queen jack, he would fold, so I'm okay with the shove. It's better to shove. Because, because I... What'd you do him anyway? Because you can't help yourself. Based, based on what he's saying there, don't you think maybe it'd be better to check shove when he bets his queen highs? Probably. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess the only thing that could happen is Perkins could jam the 7-3, and yeah. he can't call off with the king five, but yeah. But can't you? <laughs> um, right. Yeah, maybe. But I guess because a lot of the time he's going to have ace, but if he's calling an ace-x anyway. It would be better to just check for call, maybe. I don't know. It's so much easier to be in the booth we talk about yeah. um, to, to I figure mean, out the best. I mean, it's certainly a pretty unbalanced play. Like, I don't think if Anatoly flops a strong hand or even a pair, that yeah. he leads all in. And But whether Perkins can exploit that. Perkins here flopping very strongly, top pair and an open-ended straight draw. Mike Lear with top pair, big kicker Bingo. and Bingo. Perkins turns Bongo. a straight. Yeah, don't want to... By the way, not to straight too on topic, how did um, your boy Brammer finish yesterday in the 10K? Oh, yeah, really. He 11. had tons of chips. Really? Crap, I can't eight, say. One of 18. Wow. He lost Ace King off to Ace King off. <laughs> and then Jawanda got him a couple of times. That happened to me in a 20 rebuy once. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it happened to me. You know, you know I really, because I thought it finished last night, so I really woke up and I was sure that he was going to have won a mil. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. Like he closes from there so yeah, much. So often, yeah. It's, uh, pretty brutal, actually. Uh, Seaver's got a lot of chips. Um, there. I saw a pretty interesting hand actually between Seaver and Charlie Carroll, which uh, Charlie Carroll made a pretty ambitious all-in preflop call. It, but uh, I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> and Mike, Mike Leah, Leah oh my delivering a chop Stop again. City. It ain't right. Unbelievable. Mike Leah, who has been. Uh, and he might have found a way to win this hand now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's the twisted part. And. Perkins must be fuming. Pleasure doing business with you again, Mike. Pleasure doing business with you. Oh. Second time. Incredibly sticky. So yeah. hard to game the fold. Believe me, guys, if you're there. tuning in and you're a member of the GPL, if you want Mike Lear to fold, you need to bet big because yeah. he is hanging around. Yeah, he wants to take you to showdown. He wants you to take you to the precinct and, Filatov, and bring you in. Big problems for Anatoly Filatov. Now, does Raiden Khan ever get away from his hand here? Not. Loving this spot, Filatov. Raiden Khan does have a strong opening. Yeah, but range my under the gun. Size, I have to gamble here. But Ace Jack suited. Take the risk. 15 bigs. Uh, sorry, 13 bigs. Too good. All in. And now Mike Lear, you can see, has the same hand as Raiden Khan. Exact same two suits as well. Wow, he's Mike is almost thinking. certainly going to isolate. I would hope be completely he, he standard. doesn't have I mean, ace This queens. is a lot of action. Isolation in but the nation. Ace king. Pocket uh, tense is okay. Top five hands. Rejams. And as Griffin was saying, now the action on Raiden Khan. This is Pocket the only tense. spot that Raiden, isn't Raiden automatic. Raiden. Ace king does go into the muck. Wow. Oh, and Mike Leia in a great spot. Really Not so fun. great oh, after that spot. On. You can see Anatoly actually a favorite now. Wow. And turns a flush. A little smirk from wow. the Wolverine. So bad. And then get lucky against Mike. Now I'm okay with that. I'm okay, guys. I feel I feel great. I feel awesome. Guys, tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern, and 6 p.m. Central European time, Nananoko, the Goku of the Global Poker League, will be up against the one and only 
Elki of the Paris Aviators. Please stay tuned for that. They have played already once before, heads up. Great showmen, great characters, a huge fan base within the Twitch community and otherwise. That's one that I'm super super excited about. Please tune in there for Can't sure. Can't wait to commentate on it. Yeah. Oh, you're not even going to be here, buddy. Was that the bit you just did there? The booth bee is in the, the house. The booth is in the house. That was actually a condition. Uh, very excited um, to announce that, by the way, if you're just joining us. I think I just got muted, so there we go. Oh, if you're just joining us about the booth beat tomorrow, he's going to be replacing Sam temporarily just for the you day. You can't say the B word. You can't say the booth B word? Um, uh, very excited to have him on board. And, um, you know, very cool of the Global Poker League to, um, you know, work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation <laughs> and allow that opportunity <laughs> for Roland. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. um, so, Raiden Khan, Limp calling the Jack-8 and floating the 10-10-3, perhaps hoping to rep a 10 on a later streak. Obviously, oh, and Perkins fires again. Um, you can see the problem with firing again with the A6. does only get worse hands to fold. Um, some advantages to that, taking your opponent off their equity. Uh, and such like, but uh, not sure whether <laughs> that was necessarily a great bet from Bill Perkins. Um, does get the job done and got a nice stack now, and now Ace Jack as well. Perkins opting to just call from the small blind. Igor getting to see a flop for cheap with the beautiful Queen Nine of Spitz. Perkins, pretty good start here. Igor, just as well, repping it there, taking it down. Okay, Bill. You, you take it, you won. Bill Perkins, just popping up that 7-10, loving his button. Always ready to splash around here at the Global Poker League. San Martino coming so in for Dario a race under the gun with the suited 5-6. And, and Mike Lear, oh wow, Filatov with two what jacks. I do? And oh, Mike Lear with ace-queen. We can expect some further action here. Filatov jams, and now Mike Lear with ace-queen with a decision. Definitely the bottom of his consideration range here pre-flop. I think he will make the call, but call here because wouldn't the be surprised if he folds. Like yeah, I think he'll fold. really top of my range here and uh, I could dominate a lot of hands that he will fall to my shove and he would shove if I three bet but it seems to me like it's still better to shove here because he may call uh, he may call with the worst hands here and I don't want to play a flip up oh, okay I play flip with Mike okay we he hits right a win in the for general Mike layup <laughs> Uh, Actually, in my opinion, a queen a offsuit um, could be an easy fold here, but Mike decided to gamble. Okay, I lost this bet. And Filatov, you not can hear thrilled by the call. The disappointment in his voice. I <sighs> think that ace queen sure. is very, very close. But Perhaps fold, yeah. the reputation Vila ha Filatov has uh, factoring into Mike Leia's thinking. Uh, we are only six-handed, of course, but uh, San Martino, we've seen play a reasonably solid strategy up to this point. Um, you know, obviously did have the six high on this occasion. Perkins coming in for a raise with the five-six off. Loving with it, Filatov mate. being short. And with three to a straight and three to a flush, quite justified in making a continuation bet. San Martino with a pretty cuspy hand. Uh, very, very close. But with Filatov playing being short has to play more snugly can't afford to bust before filatov can't afford to play his draws strongly should he turn a heart with filatov play, being so short so i think that's the reason for the fold and perkins uh coming in for a raise again recognizing that this is a very uh favorable mm. situation for big stacks but on this occasion raiden khan hugely outflopping perkins and i'd love to see perkins 
Well, maybe I made a bit results oriented to say you should check here. He is entitled to bet, but yeah, checks it back, taking out a street. And the board now a lot more dicey for the ace nine. Khan checking again. Let's check this back, Bill. Let's just and Bill does now bet for some protection. Obviously not wanting to free roll hands like nine eight with the eight of clubs or pocket fours with the four clubs that Red and Khan would almost certainly fold. And Perkins now with the King Ten. Freddie Khan, considering his options, and leads small. Pretty unusual strategy, particularly picking a sizing like this. Most players will check here, hoping to block a bat. But I think Perkins, if he did have... Right, sense is tingling here, and I'm just going to just... Great call from Bill Perkins. Doesn't fall for it. One of the unfortunate things about Raiden's lead there is stronger ha uh, worse hands are very, very likely to fold when you take that line. Uh, very hard to get called by worse. Pocket eights. Great spot for Filatov. Bill Perkins, you can see, has a five also. So... One out for Igor Kurganov. One card in the deck, or Filatov will double through. And the, the manager, Wolverine will not go away. Yeah, the, the Wolverine doubling up, trebling up to five big blinds. Everyone Double else up. will have Seven. hoped that he would exit. And now he picks up another pair. And we could see a shove from Raiden here. We could just see a call from Igor. It looks like it's going to come to Mr. Kurganov. Filatov with a chance to get back into things. But okay. Kurganov nice. spikes the bullet. Oh, close. Six. And the river is... Come on. Seven from heaven? I need some points. Not today, no. kid. G G okay, Anatoly Filatov. Good games, guys. Good game. Certainly someone who with a looser, more aggressive style is either gonna post wins or put up donuts. Um, that's the nature of the way Filatov plays, I think. Yeah, and obviously gonna be very disappointed. He is um, you know, really the face of the Moscow Wolverines. So much success, as you mentioned, thirty three points so far here in the first seven weeks wow. of the Gold Poker League. What a sizing for Bill Perkins. Opening for a full 4x. He don't give a... <laughs> and Mike Lear, who would certainly have called a normal raise, now in a very difficult spot. Probably not going to be sure of what to make of this opening sizing. Something you don't see professionals do. Most of them are consistent with their raising size. There's Heisenberg. Um, so that opponents can't get reads on them. Bill Perkins, an amateur, happy to make adjustments, but... And Mike Lear calls the 4X open and gets an, a dream flop. wonder if he would have folded to that sizing against a professional player. And this is bad, bad news for Perkins. Top pair, top kicker, and already 10K in the pot. A bit of a uh, stomach, stomach flu. Aww. Stomach flu. So only two scoop bracelets this weekend. <laughs> and oh my Perkins improves to top two pair. Queen Jack has come in, which should be a bit of a concern to Perkins. <clears throat> but he doesn't slow down. So my options here are to call or to shove. I think I'm just going to shove. I don't want to give him a free card if he has a draw. You know, protecting my hand with uh, you know, the point system is pretty important. If he has ace-king or something like that, he's going to call anyway. Leah, he's all in. Crying out. Ah! Oh, Jesus, I'm just not that good to 
When you're not that good, you're just not that good. Oh, I'm going to need an ace or a king. Pretty sick. <laughs> I was the best, so that happened. And you could see how advantageous to Mike Lee it was to choose to shove the turn. The river coming, the queen of clubs, putting out the flush and the one card straight. Um, probably would have gone check, check. Mike Lear absolutely maximizing. And he yeah. now has a commanding chip lead four-handed. Bill Perkins could consider himself very unfortunate to exit with just one point. And the travails of the Berlin Bears yeah. continues. And this match could really shake up uh, the Eurasia Conference. As we know, zero points for the Moscow Wolverines with Anatoly Filatov. The Royals, and both the Royals and the Aviators, just within eight and seven points of that first place. So if there's a win here from either the Royals or the Aviators, they're going to be right in that hunt um, after, uh, after this first, first, first heat. Mike Lear um, does defend the ace nine of hearts. Um, not opting to three bet again, taking it to the streets. Very, you know, very different style to Filatov, who we saw do a lot of three betting with these kind of hands. Kurganov, continuation bet with two pair. And Mike Lear does stick around with the two overcards and turns two pair himself out drawing Kurganov. Very deceptive. Mike Lear with very few 9x in his range. And Kurganov happy to check it down. The pot going to General Mike Lear. If you're joining us late, we're four-handed. We lost Anatoly Filatov for zero points for top of the table, Moscow Wolverines. Bill Perkins out just a moment ago for one point. San Martino, who we have not seen much from, ha is pretty short at 13 big blinds. Mike Lear of the Paris Aviators. Chip leader. Chip leader. And Mike Lear, when he's got a stack, he's going to want to see some flops. Or does flop extremely huge here um, in a heads-up pot. Middle pair, backdoor, Nutta Flusha against the measly pair of Mike Leah. Might be a spot where Mike, even though he does technically have a pair, where he knows it's going to be incredibly difficult to continue unless he turns a set. So might opt to make a fold here. But I wouldn't be surprised if he raised, and I wouldn't be surprised if he calls. General Leia, very, very sticky and very, very tricky. All right, so obviously Figure bets again here. Let my hand go. If he checks to me, I think I'm going to turn my hand into a bluff. All right, Kirkenau Two bluffs first. Firing huge on the turn, trying to pressurize Mike Lear's 10x, I presume. Also protecting when he is ahead. Um, against cans like Queen Jack, Jack Nine with a heart. Um, okay to get more money in the pot because he can still turn his hand into a bluff on the river if he decides that Mike Leah has something like a 10 in his hand. And we do momentarily just, get a little, just get a little tease, a little hint yeah. of what's to come here at the yeah. GPL. Don't be confused. That was Igor Kurganov. Often, uh, Not Igor Yaroshevsky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not... Not... Um, Obviously referencing the small graphics error last <laughs> week where Igor Kurganov was lifted as Igor Yaroshevsky. To be fair, look pretty similar, especially in a small little thumbnail. He looks a little bit like uh, Western depictions of Jesus as well, doesn't he? Yeah, fantastic. And a little prince, maybe. maybe have, you seen the prince? have you seen the Photoshop prince one of him? Yeah. Phenomenal. I'll, get, I'll, I'll make sure we show it on the stream. Raider Khan, three betting the full three off for a third of his stack. Out of the small blind. Like a boss. Yeah, I mean, just so you know, guys. Um, He's got This moves. is 
not very standard. But you know what it is. With San Martino being so short. But you know what it is. It's Raiden Khan. <laughs> this kind of Can move hear, with Mike? just really weak aces and would be folding if I shoved. He knows. But he's I guess done he's research. also doing that with his monsters. Go on then, Mike. Take him to showdown. In his eye, in his eye, in his eye. Yeah. <clears throat> he knows. I'm really tempted to just shove on him from past Do it. past matches. But, oh, come on, Mike. Um, Mike. I think I will fold this Mike one. Make it to showdown, pretty Mike. Weekend. Oh, he was so close, Sam. Raiden Khan, getting the job getting done. Getting away with I murder. mean, why would you pick that hand, though? It's just, it's pretty sick. Pretty sick. Repping aces when you got the full high. Igor flops an open ended straight draw. One, two, eight, five. We have a king of hearts turn. On the turn, we decide to make it into a bluff, and we're always jamming river. Against Mike Leah, the stickiest of sticky with the king high. Here. Easier. Mike Leah, not someone like who likes to relinquish their equity. You can see, in fact, he does have on this turn card 65% of the equity in this pot. If it goes to showdown, six and a half times out of ten, he will win. Your second barrel is going to win again. Key skill in poker in the modern era, realizing your equity. Something Mike Lear does exceptionally well. On this card, uh, on this occasion. Igor Kurganov is yeah, I think he was floating enough there with like jack highs, etc. Usually it's a card we can check pretty well, but especially our hand benefits definitely more from betting as well. Yeah, Igor gonna have plenty of 10x. He the can Jesus show. of uh, poker. Daryl's got under 10 bigs. San Martino um, showing the benefits of a tight strategy. Um, just hasn't had the hands but already in a position where he secured two points without really having to do much. So have someone bust and play another heads up. Let's go all in here, Mike Leah. Um, Hoping to see well. some more bluffs over the course of this match from Igor Kurganov. He will bluff for your sins, everyone. <laughs> and he 15, will, 16 he will die for your bad runs. It's an ICM play there. Two famous screen names, Go Leafs Go uh, and Hey, come on, man. We're Canadian. Hey, hey, hey. Go Leafs Go uh. oh. Come on, mate. Oh, is it? Hey. Go Leafs Go and uh, LeChuck Poker. Yep. Eagle Kogelov. My fav second favorite Chuck online. Chillax Chuck, obviously. Mate, taking I, the saw cake. Him, I saw him. I saw him. a little Chillax, eh? How he, much fun he, is he to watch? He had the, had the chip lead. He, he, was, he, yeah. he, he didn't win anything, though, did he? I don't think so. No, but, but he, he, had, he always finds a match. Oh, my God. He called off. Eight. 100 big blinds. So that's what I want to do. It's the best case scenario for sure. If he jams, it becomes probably a fold. Both players <laughs> hitting middle pair. Oh, yeah. Eagle Kirkenoff go with... The whole purpose of the bet now is to make it incentivizing for him to jam. So it has to look like we want the hand done and that he has to look at me. Jesus letting everyone know. And Dario Sammartino, now he's hit a pair. Got some back doors Dario, as well. Oh, Very good. Igor, loving life. Sammartino doesn't find a club. It's my dad's birthday. He's calling and only. actually refusing to call. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad son. I know. The kicker but I have to plays. focus on busting Dario. Instead. Dario, oh, bye-bye, Dario. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, bella. Arrivederci. Like Bambolino, his son likes the Bambolino. <laughs> so, San Martino out for two points. And Mike Lear with the jack three. That he's going to call off lighter in this spot than he would have when 
Him and Dario were both short. So I'm just going to fold this one. Does give the walk to Raiden Khan. Uh, and Raiden had the goods. <laughs> Speaking of goods, this will be an all-in and a call yeah, if I know yeah, anything about that, these two players. Raiden Khan. Wow. All right. Griffin Benja, he Come doesn't on, often predict things, but when he does, he's, he's often wrong. wrong. <laughs> Come on, man. No, I mean, the money can still go in, but... Uh, yeah. Not if not if Igor shoves. So again, the size he feels he can still comfortably jam with. Again. Now, he's getting a very good point between right strong Broadway cards. Igor going to be pretty it's polarized it's between right good and Raiden oh, wow. Khan. I guess it's just trying to look stronger. Yeah. Whatever. We're not folding. Yeah, it was oh, just trying to look stronger. Old. Hold. 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 Hey! Oh, cool. That was before I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta try this stuff sometimes. Very nice. Heads up. And hold the door, Igor. Mike, no fold. Yeah. Let's see if we can. We lose Raiden Khan, Please. and we are heads up. Awesome. Between <laughs> Igor Kurganov and Mike Lear. Legends. Igor Kurganov still without a win in the six max format. And how huge is this for the standing, Sam? The second and third place team, just one point between them uh, in the Eurasia standings early on in week eight here. The Moscow Wolverines waiting with bated breath to see who's going to join them at yeah. the top. Lear has a win posted in both heads up and six max. A star performer so far in this mini remember, era. Yeah, six max getting heads up this early. The blinds are actually quite low, so we have a lot of play. We also fold. I'm 40, I'm 40 bigs deep. Igor is over 50. Points out. Very deep playing. stacks, particularly for the C six max format. For sure. Um, 816, obviously my favorite level here at the GPL. And they're playing one out of two folds. It's actually, one out of one folds too. It's pretty, pretty good for now. Okay. Looking at pair is always good. We both have a ton of time. I would like to see a hot seat in heads up. That would be very much fun. A lot of draws. Gutter, back or flush draw. Even though we're definitely also a bit weary. That's work. Oh wow, he had deuces on 10 8 5 and he just called against the half. But I guess with the deuce of hearts, I'll it's. Fire twice here. More deal, yeah. See if I can get him the fold, like an 8 or some of his just straight draws. Vicious with two shoving stacks behind. Even if I'm good here with my 8, I have against his draws, like Jack 9, Queen Jack, only like very little outs, and against his hands, I have basically no outs. He always has at least one overcard. Plus gut shot or two over cards in a straight draw or flush draw, so let's get out of there. We can go for some value here, especially against Mike Lee, yeah, who doesn't like to fold. He doesn't like to fold. It's a very large assumption. My back doors here, the three of clubs really isn't that great. And then, yeah, I'm just going to let this one go. Just no care in the world. He really doesn't like to fold. Hmm. It works out often enough. I mean, he's playing very well. He won two scoops. He's the only one to he's win two badass. scoops. He's a total badass. Yeah. I'm not trying to take anything away from Mike Leon. Just some people are very good while they fold a lot, and other people are very good while they don't fold a lot. to the bathroom. I'm fighting a bit of a stomach flu. Uh, Yesterday and today, so so far so good. Try and make it through these matches without any uh, interruptions. Check race here too lightly because I like my hand, but I don't want to check it back because it can develop into some pretty nice turn and river spots if I start out betting. I'm seeing that hand where Raiden went for that uh, little three bet and four three offsuit. It's crazy. My gut was telling me to shove on him, but I didn't trust it. 
figure on the floor, but actually on that board, I shouldn't really, but not that big. It's Boom! Big. Okay, calm down. <laughs> Are we doing advertisement? <laughs> okay, let's advertise. It's, it's, who can guess what? <laughs> Who who is Igor imitating right now? One moment, we have to see that uh, hand. Okay, no, I'm doing a little bit of advertisement. Who is Igor <laughs> imitating? Answers on Twitter, please. It's a very specific reference. Wait, I have to change my mug. And he should have glasses on. <laughs> okay, answers can come into Twitter or Twitch. Fold to show that we have a folding range as well. And next time when we have three, four off, we'll call it. Because we actually don't. I'm a bit more shallow now. I'm down under 30 bigs. I've chipped down a little bit. The blinds went up, so a little bit less play. Well, he definitely has a folding range as well. A little bit more shallow. Igor Kurganov versus Mike Leia. Anatoly Filatov exited for zero points. Really hurting top of the table, Moscow Wolverines. Bill Perkins out for a single point. Um, then we lost um, Dario Sammartino for two points. Raiden Khan for three points. These guys, five points secured. Seven for the win. As my good friend, friend Griffin Benjir pointed out, separated by a single point in the table. Um, real great opportunity to significantly close the, the gap on top of the table, Moscow Wolverines, and nudge ahead of their competitors. Let's see what's up. Against 10 9, we have in front. Against many draws, we were still in front. King High sees my betting is virtually a King High. He could have some aces. He doesn't have to just shove on me at over 20 bigs. So he could have some aces. He could have some eights or sixes, straight draws, flush draws. Just don't really feel like barreling twice here. That's a very interesting point. Mike, no fold, Leah. Usually I would have to be over that, but I know he doesn't like to fold and he might level himself into something. So how about just make it normal, big size, 75% works. Hand. Nice play from Igor Kurganov, recognizing how well the cards in his hand, the blockers, interact with that river card. Great start to the heads up here into the six figures. 102,000 for Igor, just 43k for Mike Leia. And Mike Leia with a very strong ace queen puts it into his raising range. And Kurganov does have a hand he can take to a flop. Little potential. Small bet, we're in. Small bet, we're in. Yeah. It's a pretty tough spot here. You could have a lot of still straight draws, even though 9-7 just got there, but Jack-9, Queen-Jack... Bit more likely to have stuff than to not have stuff. You don't necessarily have to bluff this hand. I'll check. I could have definitely bet jammed there. The fact that he checked actually makes me think that he has a pair now. He might have a six. Well, it looks like he did have the ace high, but anyway, we have a king high. And absolutely have to shit. So he's just expecting king high maybe to be good sometimes. Yeah, that's right. fine. That's a nice guy. ...to what he perceives as Mike Lair's uh, sticky style. 
Yep. I think he would have gone for a bluff there against some Fantastic opponents. Fantastic sticky star. Hanging over Darius was. He did beat me in the heads up. He played well. Leia flops top pair. Pretty strong in a limped pot. Oh, here where I could check raise. Check raise with top pair with my stack is, isn't so bad, but the fact that he's been firing a lot of second barrels and I, you know, seems to be taking the more aggressive approach. Maybe I'll call, get him to fire a second. He picked up some sort of flush draw to go with a stray draw. He might fire again here. Oh, so like a king high or something. We could have gotten him off, but he probably has a hard to do it fairly often. So he's definitely not going to turn that often. Yep, checking it behind. Could possibly have a better jack or could have rivered a king, but... But Igor Kurganov with nothing to call with. And Diggs. Mike Leia still very much alive. Two nice pots going in his direction. Out chipped four to three, but still anyone's game. Whoever wins this contest will finish second in the table after this first six max match. You have quite a few combinations of offensive, like Jack Nine, Queen Nine, Queen Jack Hands. Sorry, I'm a little bit further behind. I did assume it might be time for trapping me, which people should do sometimes. He'll fold that. He was a bit tighter on the button than other people, surprisingly, actually. <laughs> so nice, yeah. <laughs> Well, he folded like three buttons already. Or two. And he folded a few big blinds. I wasn't necessarily Respect expecting you. that. Yeah. I'm not sure it's that. It just comes from a scoop win. He just won against Luke, the legend Schwartz. A lot of bottom 5%. Oh, I'm bad, Igor. You can have this one. But usually, when people start getting a lot of bottom 5%ers, they start playing some of them. I put trousers on. <laughs> I put on a shirt. <laughs> And boxers. I it's, think that's enough. You guys are lucky. That okay, is enough. Could have been a lot worse. <laughs> that's why I couldn't go on camera right away. <laughs> <laughs> we value it there because he never has a king after we check so often, except if he's trapping, which is very rarely. Had some pretty junky hands on the button here, so giving him a few more walks than I would like to. Didn't the blinds go up? Yeah, they did. Would like the sticking to his strategy despite not picking up a hand for a while. Queen high probably going to be good enough to continue. Igor with the stronger King X incentivized to see back there a lot, but Leia does give it up. I guess he's going to have a lot of straight draws there. A lot of hands really shitty shots. hands being dealt in this heads up. So interesting to see the distribution sometimes. So many big hands, so many coolers in this and, match, and then once you get heads up And sometimes. also, I think this is one of the weaknesses. We're not having a limping strategy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the fact that he's folding the jack three or five ten, whereas if you have a limping style rather than a raising style, you can just limp in and see a flop with those. Right. Um, I think, you know, they do have enough equity to... Uh, hard to really give uh, give Mike Leo a hard time at his heads up game, given how many tournaments he wins, though. Yeah, a bit what, absurd, no, yeah. I'm not. I'm not no, 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 no I'm, not, I'm not saying you're, but it's, it's yeah. interesting, right? Obviously, oh, uh, 17 wins on the tour. Um, such a huge plethora of F tops, scoop, W coup bracelets. It's really and, phenomenal. And also so hard in the modern era to be a top no limit player and learn the other games. Yeah. Because it takes so much to be competitive. Told you he was Mike, he was my guy coming in this league. Mike Leah isolating with the very junky deuce nine off, attacking Eagle's yeah, limb. There's a little something something, huh? Igor has just ace high and no club in his hand. Sorry, I just 
Just remember, don't mind taking a flop with. Flop a lot better. And one of the first few hand-over-hand -hand situations we've had. Um, Eagle with top pair. Mike Leia with second pair. Good kicker. Bit of a cooler spot here. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of juicy turn cards that could see some streets of checking. That might be one of them, although... Very few aces in Mike Leah's range. Because it's Igor hard in Mike. Mike Barrel a lot. Because it's pretty unlikely that I have an ace. <laughs> it's an upgrade. <laughs> With his turn. And Mike Leah has exactly the kind of hand he's targeting. Yes, yeah, he's not... Just hammering a 10 like that, unless it's a really good 10. You could definitely value bet like King 10, Queen 10 like this. Obviously all aces, draws, and then complete air. Still think my hand's a little bit too good to fold. It's tough, though, because I can't have an ace in his mind, most likely. So he might uh, fire a third as well. There's nothing else she's doing. You know, bluffing the queen of spades, and then you're boom. Nice bet by Igor on the turn. Our hand would also be very bad to do that. King nine off. Good luck. It's a spot that not everyone uh, goes for value there on the turn, so Igor showed his class by putting in a really big bet on the turn to, to get value out of my worst tens and sixes. It's about 15 bigs now, so I'm fine just shoving this in here. He could call with worse. He could call with king, queen, king, jack. With an ace, Mike Leia with the stronger one. Pretty unlucky here for Igor Kurganov, given how. So, shove this in for value and try and get him to call with a weak ace or a good king. I mean, I believe prefer to play more post flop, but a seven up is pretty good. You can see him raising as queen. You can definitely see him jamming as eight, as nine, as ten, sometimes, maybe. but also like King Jack. As nine, fuck. Shit. Now we gotta hit a six. I don't want too much, just a six. No! Six or three. Good turn card. Just split it. Even. Goddamn. Yeah, needed that low turn, otherwise we would have chopped. Yeah, I didn't feel like I can get away there. All right, we take the lead. And that's how quickly things can change. Mike Leia, after that semi-cooler, does take the chip lead. So overall, it should be okay. Nails this board. Two pair. But we're not raising because we're jamming and raising on that board. That's Mike Leia now outdrawing the queen high portion of Kurganov's range. We could raise for sure. We don't beat very much. It's going to be hard to call a river bet. No reason for betting. And the fact that he checks. So we beat his queen jack, queen ten, jack tens, that he's deciding not to bluff. And uh, if he has a six, then he wins. I think we're going to win. 
Não, o Jean e a Bia. So I turn a gutter, but I don't have a spade and I can't really rep a big hand here. I'm not going to bother firing at it. Reverse hands here. We'll get to the river cheaply. Should have put that off it. Um, holding Mike off some equity. Mm -hmm. seven to ace nine. Uh -huh. Yeah. Didn't find the fold for eighteen times. All right, let's try it again with ace seven. Seems a little bit like an overshove, but don't really want to give him a free flop. Don't want to play this one out of position. So I think I can probably get him to fold fold a better hand. I think he would fold uh, like the a seven type of hands again this time. He'll call with ace eight plus for sure. Because I will play post flop what I should have done with the a seven last time. Get him, Igor. Lays down the best hand, someone that likes to play the streets as much as possible. But it might be costly on this occasion because that was a great opportunity with stacks almost exactly level. Igor Kurganov, obviously being slightly results oriented, but it's possible that Mike Lear would have raised had he had a hand as strong as ace-10, ace-jack or ace-queen rather than just jamming. Hard to know for certain. But Igor Kurganov fancying himself post flop against Mike Lear does make a tightish fold, and this match continues. Been betting every time so far. The delayed bet also has worked. And this one doesn't make that much sense. This one is not to be repeated, but it works. It's more about his tendency to um, I guess he would have bet the eight and he feel fairly likely to win against the do so three. Chopped the like the two K PLO eight, amazing <laughs> best friends. Sick. They chopped it for a hundred K each. Bosses. Really cool to see stuff like that. Yeah. Did he won yet? So. Oh, for sure. Make it definitely. Need some more exposure, Mark. Ham. More what a boss. I mean, Paul G's as well, but I mean. Is Mark Ham is a special guy. I mean, we, uh, he could be a great general manager. I mean, he's been running poker players for years. <laughs> right? Seriously. Yeah, of course. And you know Volpe will go number one for him. <laughs> no question. Darren Elias. Oh, Darren Elias is already a Brazilian. Um, sick. A convert. It's interesting that this is this is his first raise in a while. Kind of makes me tempted to three bet. It's a hand he doesn't want me to see a free flop with, but it's interesting. I didn't pull the trigger. Yeah, and Mike Lear was correct there. Eagle making a slight adjustment there with Ace Four that doesn't flop too well and can't isn't really a trap. Just utilizing the blocker and. Has 
33% against kings even. So I'm just going with it for the flip against the kings. Hmm. This one's close. I think he would have three bet with his really big hands. So he has mixed in some three bets. So I think I can eliminate hands like ace jack plus. Seems like it's probably a lot of small pairs. Maybe even a little suited ace. I think I'm going to gamble here. I do have to run to the bathroom quick, so. <laughs> I think I'll take this marginal spot. Good call. Come on. Split mm, it up. Looks like time. we're going to chop a Just lot of the times. Those hands should split. No. It's a horrible thing. We need a three or six or deuce. Come on. That's it. Good game, Mike. All right, seven plays. That's it. Just in time for a bathroom break. Gets the win for the Aviators. General Laird doing his thing. I mean, you and I, we're just, you know, we're captains of the precinct. But this guy, he's like a general. He's a massive like he's, officer. Yeah, he's the guy who comes in and, like, he tells us to get out of his, his office when it's not even his office. Yeah, Mike Such Laird a legend. getting it getting it done Always in a big, done. big way yeah. for the Paris Aviators. He's a big reason behind the success of this franchise in this early mini era of the GPL. A lot of squad. They got Leno. Yeah. They got uh, I mean, Elke and Danzer. There's a lot of uh, luck. There's a lot of variance within this format. For sure. Obviously won that huge flip. Ace-Queen against the Jacks. Pretty marginal call. Um, but they capitalized on it. Played strong poker. As we said, someone that goes... Like, he takes people to the streets again and yeah, again. He takes there's it no, to showdown. There's no... Min Ray stealing on Mike Lear's no. watch. Uh, tough heads up opponent uh, in Igor Kurganov and got it done. Uh, great news for those two franchises who yes. really, really uh, closed the gap on top of the table, Wolverines. And remember, Anatoly Filatov going out for zero points. So second and third places really catching up with them with that seven and five points on the board. Yeah, and you know Filatov is going to be disappointed and he's going to want to make sure he maximizes as many points as he can get in that second heat. Uh, I believe we do have a substitution going to the second heat. Igor will be replaced by Liv, who was originally what? scheduled. They're so, so strong, uh, yeah. the London Royals. Um, you know, what a change. Not many people you could bring in who could match Igor Kurganov in poker reputation, but Liv certainly is. Ah, so, close. Is one I of mean, come on. And she's someone. She's, she's brilliant, but she, Igor's She's done special, fantastically yeah. well in this format. Yeah. Um, already posted That's true. a win and a lot of points. Really, really strong poker player. And they put Sam Trickett into the mix in the heads-up section oh. later in the week. So, you know, this is a really, Big really week for tough them. Squad uh, of poker talent, and uh, we're going to see that yet again in the second match. And Raiden Khan getting uh, getting the three points. Yeah, and you know, uh, we we I, I semi criticised that four three off, but uh, you know they find unorthodox ways to secure chips, and you know they do seem to post those third, fourth, second spots yeah. again and again. Um, uh, Hong Kong Stars maintaining the gap between themselves and the Berlin Bears, who yet again you know Bill Perkins on the wrong end of a caller, but. Yeah, again, they're struggling. Absolutely. Um, I believe that uh, Mike Leah, we do have a little Mike Leah interview. C catching um, coming in between up in about a minute. breaks. Yes, yes, yes. we got to give him a minute, obviously, dealing with a bit of a stomach flu. Still uh, not able to stop him from winning seven points for the Aviators. Scoop bracelets on the weekend. You know, articles everywhere. I mean, he's he's been my guy from day one. You know that. Yep. Him, Mustafa, Fedor. Yeah, I mean, Mike Lear, someone definitely to watch out for in mm -hmm. the WSOP. Uh, as we said, this is a guy that plays all the games. We concentrate here at the GPL on No Limit Hold'em. There obviously are a host of other poker variants, and Mike Lear, um, an incredible exponent of all the games. Disappointed, though, that uh, he didn't show us the um, you know, the jerseys in the background, the scoop bracelets. He had a little little, little yeah. subtle brag well, uh, with it, that camera it's, angle it's last really time. It's really interesting. Um, some people occasionally mock us for the Sportsify poker narrative, but Mike Leia is someone where you can see that competitive yeah. um, ethos. Love you know, that sporting ethos. Rushes me every year at Fantasy That, sport, sports, that sporting say. ethos really coming over into poker. Yeah. The, 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 the scoop, the titles, the World Series titles, and the online titles. You know, it's not a million miles away from a sporting uh, talent for when sure. you look at someone like Mike Leia. And but I want to hear what he has to say. Yeah, let's, let's go, go over to Laura Cornelius, where she's got Mike Leia on the phone. Thank you so much, boys. Congratulations to Mike Lair there. 
and the Paris Aviators seven points for them, which means now there is only two points separating first and second place. Moscow Wolverines still just in front of the Paris Aviators, who now take second place. Mike Lear should be on the phone. Congratulations to you, Mike. You have now played six matches and you have picked up 29 points in those six matches. So that is quite an achievement. You must be proud. Can he hear me? Doesn't look like he can. So we beat his queen jack, queen tan jack, tan. <laughs> Mike, can you hear me? Don't think he can hear me there. We will keep trying. But as I said, Mike Leia there has now played six matches and he has picked up 29 points in those six matches that he has played. So doing a really good job. And not just that, of course, uh, he's been doing phenomenally well in the Scoops uh, Spring Championship of Online Poker, obviously, picking up two first place. The last one was just on Sunday. I think it was in the 2K stud event. Uh, and I think he picked one up in a fixed limit event as well. So uh, some really uh, great things going for Mike Lear at the moment, just winning Tournament after tournament, doing fantastically well, not just in GPL, but uh, at Scoop as well. We're hoping to be seeing him in Las Vegas as well for the Summer Series, which is going to be starting really soon. Mike Lear should be on Skype now. Can you hear me, Mike? Yes, I can. Sorry, I had Yay. my speakers turned, turned <laughs> off, so now I can. Good to be in contact. I was just uh, saying you have now played six matches. You've managed to pick up 29 points in those six matches. Uh, you must be proud of that. It's quite a phenomenal achievement. Yeah, happy so far. Um, yeah, we, we had a, a couple of weeks that didn't go as, as planned and we've uh, fallen out of first place. So um, it would be nice to get back in the first place before the summer series starts for sure. Well, you're only two points behind the Moscow Wolverines there. I think, uh, obviously, when Anatoly Filatov went out in, well, sixth place, you probably had a little sigh of relief knowing uh, the gap was going to be closed a little bit. Yeah, that was good. But uh, London is, was ahead of us. So ended, ending up with heads up with Igor was uh, um, definitely uh, finishing ahead of him leaps us up, uh, up ahead of London now. So that was good too. So obviously good results all, all around. You mentioned there was a lot of play left going into heads up play with Igor there. Is that something that was good or bad for you with Igor as an opponent? It'd be good. I, I like to have a lot of play, um, but not feeling very good. So I was happy. I was happy to gamble a little bit. Uh, Igor was trying to play small ball, which, uh, which I respect. And, um, uh, I was maybe trying to up the variance a little bit. So, Tell us about your scoop wins, though. You've uh, been doing really well out of our GPL players, I think probably the most successful. You had one just on Sunday, right? Uh, yeah, I won an event on Sunday, and I won an event um, a couple days before that. So um, winning two events during scoop is, is pretty awesome. Um, actually, on the overall leaderboard, I think... Uh, Jason Mercier finished second. Yeah. I think I'm fourth or fifth. And then uh, Vladimir Troynovsky, I think, is like fifth or sixth. So GPL was well represented. One was a stud event. One was a fixed limit event. Was that right? Yeah. Yeah. I like my limit games. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're very different, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, Quite different. <laughs> you think we should bring think, some of that into the GPL <laughs> for season I two? Would, I, I think it would favor our team immensely. We have a lot of good limit players. I imagine Dan's as well. Dan's is very good at mixed games as well, isn't he? Yeah, for yeah. sure. And did you watch any of uh, Luno last week? Obviously, he won his six max uh, last week. Do you watch the other Paris Aviators play and kind of uh, talk about it? Yeah, I, I, I try and watch every match, but the last couple of weeks with Scoop going on was was hard to keep track at the same time, but I, I watched what I could. And we're gonna see you in Vegas, hopefully. When will you be off there? Yeah, I have there on the 31st, and I'll be there for the whole summer. So. All right, well, we look forward to seeing you. I, can, I, I feel bad because you, you're in a bit of a bad way. You've got a bad tummy. I hope it's gonna get better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I hope it gets better soon. I think uh, the 16 days of scoop, playing like 14, 15 hours a day with not much sleep was, uh, I think it kind of just caught up to me. And 
it kind of happens for me once it's over is when I sort of get sick, once I kind of, the adrenaline and everything shuts off. But yeah. uh, I think a couple of days of rest and rest and I'll be good. But um, we have the uh, Raptors uh, playoff games the next next few days. So I got to get better for those. Oh, no. Well, I know what Eric will be uh, wanting to chat to you about that. Get some yeah, rest in because sure. we've got another six max match coming up very, very soon. And uh, obviously right. we want you on form and we'll see. Yep if we can see the clean sweep in the six max for the very first time. You did think you were going to do it last time. It didn't happen. Yeah, we'll, we'll try see. again. We'll it's, try it's again. Nice to have, it's nice to have another opportunity to do it. Okay. All right. Best of luck, Mike. Thanks for chatting with us. Yeah. No problem. Mike Leia there for the Paris Aviators taking seven points. They are now in second place, just two points away from first place. Moscow Wolverines. Let's go back to the desk and take a look at a key hand. That's right, Laura. We have one key hand, and usually, Sam, I know, especially you like, um, you know, the big bluffs, the big calls. This match, though, uh, one of the biggest coolers we can see in poker between Mike Lea and Bill, Bill the Thrill Perkins. Um, massive cooler that really gave him uh, a big push up the standings and able to get those, all those points for the Aviators. Yeah, big swing uh, in this match. Uh, we talked about the flip earlier that Mike Lea benefited from. Mm -hmm. This was a big moment both for Berlin Bears and the Paris Aviators. Let's check it out. And did start off already in rather unconventional Very fashion. Very unconventional, yeah. Um, you know, we spoke about Bill Perkins. Not someone like Mike Lair, who is playing poker day in, day out, has other things he is concerned with. Um, varying his sizing, really, I guess, according to his hand. Um, I don't know whether he wants to inflate the pot or it's a hand he doesn't particularly like and wants yeah. to get it done uh, pre-flop. Really, really unusual. Um, some players would elect to fold to uh, the larger um, 4X sizing. But Mike Lair, I think because he feels that if he can flop a set against Bill Perkins, um, it's worth more than flopping a set against someone like Dario Sammartino because Bill Perkins is going to make more mistakes post-flop. Yeah, and the other thing to consider, I mean, one of the comments you did make as this hand was developing was, you know, would he peel over a 4X against a really good player? Well, the reality is, is a really, really good player, especially one in the GPL, would never be 4Xing on the button. Um, so it really does create a completely, um, you know, uh, non-standard, yeah. non-GTO kind of situation. I think Mike Leo would peel um, with any pair, yeah. and then, uh, certainly with threes. And this is the nightmare scenario yeah, we hold him. for Billy. Flopping top pair against a set. Uh, particularly as Mike Lea, you know, only has two sets here. Might even elect to three bet pocket tens, perhaps not against 4X. Mm -hmm. um, but so few value combos. And when Bill Perkins turns this eight, ace, he outdraws King 10 as well. Um, you know, can call a hand like ace 10 of hearts, ace uh, 10 of... Um, Oh, well, only one combo of Ace and mm -hmm. Susie, but can call her that hand as well. Um, so Bill Perkins bets the turn for value, and Mike Leia now had a decision. Yeah, and an interesting blocker conversation, too, is that, um, you know, Mike Leia can't have Ace Three of Spades here, a hand that he would potentially peel pre-flop and then maybe peel on the flop with the backdoor flush draw because Perkins does have the Ace of Spades in his hand. So not very few value hands that he is actually beating here with Ace King. Mostly the Ace Ten is really the only combination he could have. But of course, yeah. his hand strength a little too strong. Yeah, of expecting course. to see and like, Queen Jack yeah. or something like threes. Yeah, just and you can too see strong. see Bill's experienced enough. He doesn't like it. Like when Mike Leia goes all in on a board that's so favors the pre-flop razor he, he often is in really bad shape but you can see great decision from mike lair chose to make the big all-in yeah. on the turn uh, to maximize value from the pocket threes and we saw that queen of clubs come off yeah that would completely kill the action flags, yeah. uh, would have probably gone check check on the river uh, with the jack being a one card straight um, so mike lair maximizing value with the pocket threes and uh, great play from him set him up for that win yeah and a really tough luck there for bill perkins we talked about before the match how you know things he would have to hit some boards against this really tough field and unfortunately if he's also running bad it's going to be super difficult for the Berlin Bears to put some points together but yeah, he was sure. looking loose he was looking like he was having a good time he had a beautiful girl on his arm and uh, you know big smile on his face I think he'll come back strong in the second heat yeah for sure and we've got Libbury in the mix now as well great to see her in action yes. um, this lineup doesn't get any softer though for Bill Perkins uh, really an unfavorable situation for the Berlin Bears for sure uh, let's head to the lounge and we'll see how that affects the standings. Big moves for the Paris Aviators and the London Royals.
Well, thank you guys. I have already talked a little bit how that affected the standings, but we didn't see it in the graphics, so let's just check it for real. I believe, though, that there's two points separating first and second place, Moscow Wolverines and the Paris Aviators. Obviously, London came into today uh, in second place. They have now been bumped down to third. There it is, Wolverines two points clear. Aviators with 85 points. London Royals now one point, just separating second and third. So everything to play for in this se second Eurasian six max match. Uh, obviously, Liv Bury will be taking uh, the place of Igor Kurganov. Hong Kong Stars have 77 points in fourth place. So a slightly wider gap there, seven points between third and fourth. Uh, and then Berlin Bears with 65 points, eight points separating fourth and fifth. Uh, uh, obviously, we saw the wonderful uh, Mr. Perkins in action there. He, he, he declared that he, could, he wasn't good enough to fold the hand, and indeed, he, he couldn't fold the hand, and he bust. Rome Emperors in sixth place with 60 points. They are five points behind uh, and everything to play for in this second six-max match. So, the lineup will stay the same, except for... Uh, the lovely Liv Bury, manager of the London Royals, will be taking uh, Igor Kurganov's place. She was, in fact, supposed to play the first match, but she got caught up in traffic. Maybe we can find out where she was uh, coming from or what she was doing. She was looking lovely, though, as ever, uh, on the webcam. Maybe uh, it's the, been the first ever couples six max uh, this evening. Maybe we can make that a regular thing on the GPL. Let us know what you think to that. Always uh, write your comments in the Twitch chat box. Uh, we want to know your comments and your thoughts. Also, tell us your comments about the GPL in general. What would you change? Uh, anything you like, anything you don't like, head over to theglobalpokerleague.com. Head over to the bottom right-hand corner. There's a little green tab. Click on it and right away, but only say nice things about me, please. Let's head back to the boys at the desk because that second six-max Eurasian match is on its way. Thanks, Laura. Uh, big second match here coming up. We have a substitution, as we uh, have keeps mentioning. Liv Bury coming in uh, for her uh, her man. Yeah, Igor I mean, Igor is a great presence on the webcam. Yes. Uh, so much strategy, so much personality. Perhaps only topped in the GPL. By yes. A few people, one of them whom is Liv Bury. Obviously, so vivacious, so energetic, such a poker talent. Someone that has been a brand ambassador for stars for many, many years now. Someone that's been an ambassador for the whole of poker. Um, so, you know, the manager of London Rules, uh, very committed to GPL. Uh, we're loving having her yes. as part of the six-max format. Now, I'm uh, loving her. Yeah, great.